Christina Kim. Flamboyant, outspoken, controversial, and a celebrated champion of four ladies European and LPGA Tour events. But did you know, she nearly lost her battle with depression. Christina Kim, welcome to Match Play. Thank you. Thanks so much I for having so me. I am so glad that we finally <laughs> hooked up together. I'm sorry it's taken so long. Well, you had a little issue there a couple years ago with the little tooth thing, and I've had dental, and everybody knows about dental. But hey, listen, thank you so much. You're so busy. You have so many things going on, and playing on the Ladies European Tour a little bit too, mm -hmm. and winning and things like that. So we've got lots to talk about. Christina, I want to go back because we, we have so many things I want to cover with you, and you're such you're such a great personality for oh, the LPGA. Sweet. You know, years and years ago, when you turned pro at 18, mm -hmm. um, you beat Lorena Ochoa in a futures tournament playoff. Yes, that was one of my claims to fame, yes. <laughs> and that's a good claim to fame because I've had Lorena on my radio show on right. numerous occasions after some of her wins. And, but she, um, and you were a very young lady at that time. Mm -hmm. And Lorena fed you a drink that I love. The michelada. When I'm in Mexico, a michelada. Absolutely, yes. But you had a few micheladas. <laughs> yeah, and I think I might have been a little bit younger than you were when you encountered your first one, because I was. We're not telling anybody. Ah, uh, my father was there, so that's why it was okay. But yeah, we, uh, I first met her, God, in the last millennium. Yes. How weird is it to say this that? This was about 11 or 12 years yeah. ago, I guess. Yeah, uh, a little more than that. Maybe I think, even 12 or, 13, <laughs> yeah. 12 or 13. We're not giving away anything. Yeah. <laughs> you were a child prodigy, though, at that I was, point. Yeah, pretty much. You were a child. Let's take it a little further back, real quick, though, because Dad said to you and your siblings, let's hit some golf balls in the backyard. And you had to hit 500. Well, actually. Was that, is was, that about right? The number is correct. It was just, he said, here's a club, swing it 500 times oh. continuously, nonstop. Okay. There were no golf balls involved. There wasn't a ball involved. There was a mat. I, I missed that. Yeah, there was a mat. We were in the middle of the backyard, and it was just back and through and back and through and back and through. Not, you hold your finish, you start, you set up. What was your age? Again. I was just shy of 12. And you had no idea why you were doing it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm of Korean descent, so my dad said something, and I said, okay, that's kind of, we're good children. We're, I, we're good. We're I good have four. Stuff. Maybe I need to have Korean something infused yeah, in them. Yeah, it must be the kimchi. So. It could be the kimchi. Yeah. There you go. So you went back and forth 500 times, and you did this, I guess, for a while. Yeah, and then a one day. He said there's a point to all this. And he took you to the practice facility. He said there's a white ball. You hit it as far away from you as possible. You go after it. You do it again, and you stick it underground. And you said, that the heavens sense. opened for yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. So it was the Red Sea parting. The heavens opened. And it, did that, it, at that moment, did you fall in love with golf? Well, at that moment, golf made sense. There was a purpose to it because before it was just, you were sitting there, I mean, just swinging in and out 500 times a day. Um, so it was just kind of like, you know, a little bit of physical activity as my homework. And uh, so when he said, this is what you do, it made sense to me. Um, but it took me a little while actually to really fall in love with the game. I mean, I, I was initially, um, you know, because we learned to swing first, my brother, sister and I, as opposed to, you know, being told there's a ball and you want to hit it. You, we learned the, the technique and the physicality of the swing. So our first shots right off the bat were pretty damn good. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people were like, you're lying that this is your first time on the range. And it was just like, you know, we didn't even know we were supposed to hit something with this, <laughs> you know? So if for, for us, we had a little bit of that like confidence builder, but it took me a little, little bit of time to really fall in love with the game. You know, a lot of it was just learning about, you know, the, the little things when it comes to, you know, the, the, the you know, self-policing, the responsibilities, the accountability, the integrity that you learn, you know, through the game, just as a human being, that seems to be something that... And Dad was the guiding, yeah, the coach all our, the way he through. He was our big lighthouse yeah. all the whole time around. You grew up, and from there you went on to the Futures, which is now the Symmetra, Symmetra Tour. Tour yes. You won, beating Ochoa in the playoff, and you had your big beer payoff with the Micheladas, but... <laughs> Uh, then, uh, then, then the LPGA came on board right. for you, and you were the first, fastest, youngest millionaire on the LPGA tour. Tell me about it. Um, 
It took me, I actually don't even know how long it took me. I think it took me three years to get to that point. You were the fastest ever seasons. at that time in history. Yeah, and then the next season, Paula took it. Like that. The Pink Panther yeah. came across <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, and she, she cut it down. Pink I mean, Panther she, got you, but still, you were the first and fastest at that point, which uh, at that moment, I mean, you were making tons and tons and tons of money. What were you thinking at that point, so young, and bringing in all this money and all the travel and lots of attention, because you certainly are not one to shy under the, the, the bush at all. How were things going for you in those days? It was great. I was young. I was traveling around the world and, and having a wonderful time. I, you know, for me, the money was the last thing that I really thought about because, you know, I mean, I was just there. Golf was my passion. Golf is my passion. Golf's really all I've ever known. So for me, it was all about the golf. You know, it was about uh, trying to shoot the lowest score you can, the most birdies you can make in any single day. And, you know, that's all it was. It wasn't about, oh, I want to, you know, try and make another hundred thousand dollars or do right. this or that or anything right. like that. Right. Now, a lot of people don't know, because you, you, you've won a couple of times on the LPGA Tour, on the U European Tour as well. A lot of people don't know, you have been in the top 10 in all four of the LPGA majors as well. You've, you've scored in the top 10 yeah, finishes. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I didn't, even th I didn't even know that. Well, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> That's my job. Nice. So, Christina, tell me a little about playing, you know, on the men's tour, everything over history since Nicholas and then Watson and then Tiger taking over this baton. Everything is focused in and around building your schedule, building your practice, building your world around majors, 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 right. majors. It doesn't seem to be that way on the LPGA. Is it or not? Um, I think for a few players it is a little bit like that. But, um, you know, we do not necessarily have the exact number of playing opportunities that the men do. You know, we don't have the tournaments that coincide with the majors, you know. And so for us, we, you know, every week is the big week. Every week is a massive week, you know. And I think that's one of the wonderful things about the LPGA mm -hmm. is, you know, there are players that try and get their game ready for and cater to the U.S. Women's Open. But there's, you know, we, we just love to play. You know, it's just it's just a different world. I really, you know, it's like kind of like comparing, you know, baseball and softball. It's essentially the same same sport. It's just different.